Welcome back. We are Poll on the Call podcast, and my name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And we are so excited because today we are here with the amazing Jack Spencer of Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> and so Jax is an amazing, amazing pole coach um, and also performer, right, too? Yes, yes, I am a master instructor for my studio. I own my studio and I still love performing. So, yeah. Ah, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, you so much for, for taking the time. Judge is I judge competitions. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> the only time I judge you is if I judge competitions. It's too funny. I love it. <laughs> thank you so well, much yes. for with us um i am excited i love your cat ears and yes. <laughs> yeah thank do you, you want to so start... much for having me i appreciate it for sure uh, yeah we're so interested in and in hearing more about your journey and um and all the things that you offer to the pole world <laughs> i know yeah. saw a bit all righty we'll start with the easy stuff well, hopefully it's easy. <laughs> what got you into pole dancing? What started your pole journey? Oh, I was a stripper. I love it. <laughs> yes, I think that was. A, I positive. started dancing in the club in um, two thousand seven. So I am a dinosaur in pole years, <laughs> and I'm completely self taught. That was it. No classes, nothing around. This was before YouTube, before the four videos Carol Helms had on there. Right, <laughs> say because I was uh, a dancer in like uh, it was two thousand two. We were like before cell phones and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you're com- completely self-taught. So how did you did you learn were the other dancers helpful to you, or how did you? They, they definitely tried to be, but when you have a bunch of drunk girls at two o'clock in the morning going, you just hold it and flip, it um, doesn't translate well to my brain. So I did look up those four videos that Carol Helms had, and three of them I could not do because I was not strong. <laughs> but I'm visual, so I broke them down, and I drew little stick figures, and I would take them to work at the strip club and like four o'clock happy hour and I would try to recreate it like put your hand here and put your leg here and then I couldn't read my own stick figures so it was definitely um, a learning curve. (laughs) That is too funny I love it and it's so funny that you say you're a dinosaur in the pole industry Um, because not many people talk about that it's true like um once you're past 10 years um I don't know how to say it you're considered older in the in this field because our I don't know is it because our bodies don't last as long (laughs) my knees don't (laughs) I'm in the same boat right now mine are in so much pain (laughs) right I'm like we're still here but everything makes noise (laughs) right well I mean if you age like a fine wine and you are what you drink, then it translates well, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I can't even imagine you doing it for 15 years. You don't, I mean, you look like you have the professionalism of it, like you've been doing it for a while, but you don't look as seasoned. Dinosaur. <laughs> Dinosaur, I love it. <laughs> I haven't had too many like shoulder injuries. I'm in a sling from twisted grip or something. Correct. I have not. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. And, you're, and you're self-taught as well. It's so um I started self-teaching and I had so many injuries. So kudos to you. I was 
I think I was just scared. I didn't want to do any of the hard stuff because I was like, scary. <laughs> I was very timid. So instead of me taking, you know, just a couple months to figure out how to climb or invert or split grips, it was, I'm going to spin. I'm going to do another spin. I'm going to do another spin. I'm going to do with my leg out. <laughs> I love that. I I love that. You don't really have to know that much. <laughs> you can just yeah. get by with, yeah. Kishin helped too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but you <laughs> certainly come a long way from that because now you have all these brilliant tutorials out that yes. are so helpful to everyone. Yeah. yeah much different you. than the stick That's figures. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> do you so still do? You do figures i i just want to know because <laughs> i do, just, like, do you still do the stick figures because i know i do them for my competition pieces so i think it's so funny that you did that more not anymore not since um instagram and tiktok took over and you can screen capture things no no stick figures that's that's some dinosaur You're philosophy too to talk about that though like how um dance has like translated through the years because like how did you tell someone how to do something before there was an actual video <laughs> things you don't think about yeah that was really tricky because there was only so many platforms that we could research a couple videos of not even so much tutorials just performances of like Felix Kane and Janine Butterfly doing things than I could. And Pole Dance Dictionary kind of came out. Studio Vina came out around that time. So it was very limited. And then there started to be certifications and then names of things. But Jamila just named everything after herself. So everything was the Jamila. <laughs> so we were all very confused as well. <laughs> Which kind of her it. anything she did. Well, right. I Jamila's. I feel like I would have done that too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how many moves I invented? I did not. None. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, what, what bridged the gap between um, you being a dancer and then you starting to teach? So I danced on and off for quite a few years and if you've ever been a dancer or sex worker or in that type of industry, it takes a toll on you mentally, physically, emotionally. And at the end of the day, I really just wanted to play on the pole and they'll like, get rained on, but you had to do all the other stuff, you know, check in with the DJ and give table dances and VIP dances. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to have to play the part of the customer, but I really wanted to do pole. So there was a little time in between that I was bouncing around to different clubs and everyone's like, oh my God, like you've lost weight. Your tricks are so much cooler. Your stage presence is so much better. How do you do it? I'm like, I dance six days a week and I eat Waffle House every night. I also play on my pole at my house every day to get back. And they're like, oh my God, show me, teach me, I'll pay you. And I'm like, oh. I'm a savvy businesswoman. I think something can happen. And over the years, it just transformed. And I leaned more into teaching rather than the dancing aspect. So if we think about it, you're probably one of the first instructors out there. First, there are definitely like well-maintained studios and instructors that were already doing it. But I don't think anyone knew about it because we didn't have the internet as readily available or the platforms that we did like there was youtube and vine but vine didn't do anything <laughs> i miss vine now too funny that's incredible that's so beautiful goodness <laughs> did you have any other sort of movement background before um pole dancing or anything like that were you a gymnast or sports no oh, no no not at all that's the joke though is my mom put me in dance like tap jazz 
ballet when I was really little and all I wanted to do was stand on my tippy toes and play with my tutu and she's like well the shoes do that and I was like oh it's a bunch of lies which is fine but I was never in gymnastics I was a stoner kid all through high school I was not active so pole was the first workout I liked in the first uh any type of physical movement that wasn't couch surfing that was probably my best sport in high school was couch surfing I love it I I love too <laughs> that you were like oh let's let's you know dance in a club and then now it's become this whole like all-encompassing career and everything <laughs> yeah it's been a it's been a wild ride. Yeah, right. It's so funny how pole like just opens the doors, and there's so many different doors. Um, really yeah, I love it so much. Doors, windows, glass ceilings. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I love how you brought up the um how strippers tend to suffer with the mental side of it because yeah it not many people talk about it it is good ass money i was a stripper and i love the money i made but there is a mental toll on it even sometimes now i have issues with my partner because of it um so thank you for bringing that up because people don't talk about it on <laughs> yeah everyone thinks it's all glamour and p valley and you're like no days i left having to tip out the DJ out of pocket, or I was like, please, can I pay my house fee next time or something? And, you know, guys are just like, oh, come home with me. I'm like, oh, that was my job. So it's, it's it was definitely hard for sure. I can right. imagine. Yeah, right. I, I always like associate it to like, I've never been a salesperson, but I feel like when I was a stripper, I really felt like a, a salesperson for myself <laughs> and, oh, and yeah, I just to wanted to 100%. dance yeah. yeah 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 it's not for everyone for um, yourself and all of your assets <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna ask um have you I know you judge competitions have you been able to compete what is your experience do you have a favorite one <laughs> So I competed in Miss Polestar, which was more of a strip club competition. I and that. I hated it. <laughs> and it left a very bad taste in my mouth, only because I realized that the judge judges were just bar patrons. So they didn't know the difference between a Jamila Tuck and a Jamila Split, you know, or an Iron X or a Fonji or even a Fireman. So I was very confused on that, but also the front runners were like, oh, you know, take your critiques about, you know, your, you know, all your comments and stuff and use them for the next one. I was like, okay, bet. All of my critiques were about my weight, my makeup, my tattoos, and it looked really good for a thick girl. So I didn't do that competition anymore. Uh, that's really shitty. Do they even still yeah. do that competition? I guess we know why not. That's awful. Yeah. I don't think so. They did. Um, That's awful. A few years ago. It was probably going on like eight or nine, ten years ago. But I, I haven't heard and I don't look for it. So I'm not. And I couldn't imagine why. Yeah. That's really shitty. That's not constructive criticism yeah. at I bought all. My, I was like to do USPSF like Carol and Athea and I'm gonna do all the things and then I got really scared and had imposter syndrome and I was like so I did not ah uh, I'm so sorry to hear that that sucks it is what it is competitions are for some people and I like coaching them I like judging them I like giving feedback but I think I'm happiest on stage when I'm just sleeping on spin, grabbing my leg in a split. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> this, is, this is my timing and my musicality. And I'll smile and I'll blink and then break. Like, it's, it's too much. My brain just wants to have, have fun. Pole is supposed to be fun. And competitions are fun for some people. And that is totally fine. Not for me. I think my anxiety just gets in the way of that. I feel that. Yeah, for sure. 
right? It's definitely something to experience. I feel like everyone should definitely experience, but you're absolutely right. It's not for everyone. Facts. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing that because I've heard similar stories where people, the judging comments should not have been made. And it really deters people. Yeah. It brings up anxiety. And um, it's sad that that happens in such a segregated form of fitness already. <laughs> We're supposed to be yeah. each other. And wow, I can't. It's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like as dancers, especially pole dancers, we don't talk about the anxiety part a lot. We talk about the tricks, we talk about competing, but we don't talk about actually like having that anxiety, those panic attacks, because it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. well, even to the stage, before I go on stage for just a showcase, I'm, my hands are super sweaty. I'm like, suck, cues, even though I don't have cues because I freestyle everything, but I'm going to fuck up. Oh no. Oh, can I see? Can I say that? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I should have asked. I'm so sorry. But to this day, I, I get those butterflies. And I think it's a good thing because the moment you that you don't get those, you don't care. I've heard that before too. Like the, the nervousness, you should always feel that because if you don't, then there's something wrong. Yeah. I've yeah, never heard yeah. that before. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Uh, it makes me feel more normal when I'm like having to pee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all of my competitors or my friends before they go on stage, I'm like, did you poop? Yeah. You have to poop. You have to pre-show poop. And if not, like you're not gonna have a great time. <laughs> Too funny. Great time. I know. I think mine is farts. Like I have to let it all out because if I do it on the floor, I would just die. And I get unfortunately. Or you're gonna invert and go exactly omg <laughs> too far i wonder I'll if that's the music is loud no one will hear it <laughs> too... <laughs> i think that would be a memorable performance though if i shat up <laughs> if i shot on the stage i had i just got hired for a performance called the white hot party like the neon classic oh. and so i had to wear white don't wear white as it is and the whole time i'm just like don't shit my pants don't shit my pants don't shit i'm wearing white i can't i can't yeah i didn't i didn't but that was like the scariest moment i've ever been performing i'm like i am so that is i would have been the same way i can't wear white at all mm -mm. Right? same yeah there's no way <laughs> that is oh my god so scary I love it though. Like this is so real. <laughs> it's authentic. <laughs> My deepest, darkest fears: wearing white and then shitting. I can't. Uh, we all have those fears. I mean, sometimes I think the same thing for sure. Oh my goodness. Uh, There's been several it's, times it's where I've caught. <laughs> Right, like every time I teach a fish flop, I know I have to use the bathroom first because I'll just <laughs> fart. I'm done. Yep. <laughs> Time, unless I go to the... I'm sorry if that's TMI <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> Things that can happen. Bodies are weird. <laughs> All righty. So what is your kind of, um, I hate asking what is your post style, but what, what moves you, what, what kind of flow do you like? Are you a trick queen? Do you like to dance low? I am a high flyer with ooey gooey notes. Like, I don't mind being a floor dweller, but if you give me a pole, I'm gonna climb to the top. <laughs> if you're if you're like, oh low flow, you can't climb. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I really like splitty trick because I'm all legs. So any split, especially the faker the split, the better. I prefer. But if I'm not touching a pole, very ooey gooey, very slinky, very slow. And that that's probably just from that stripper style background that I came from. 
I can go fast and I, I don't have a lot of power tricks. It's very melty. I don't know how to really describe it, but those are my favorite. I love it. Yes, that's very honest. I mean, you have we, some people choose one style, but you have all sorts of likes. Yeah, and it's, it also depends on the music. A good dancer can dance to anything. So if it's fast, yeah, I'm going to shake ass and twerk my little butt off. But if it's something slow and moody, ooh, all the ooey gooeys. Yeah. Yes. I was looking at mm-hmm. pictures and you do have legs for days, but fake splits are my favorite too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. What is your, do you have a favorite trick? My, my favorite is probably a jade split. It was the first move that I saw as like a baby polar and Felix Payne did it and she just cock that leg down and I was like oh my god that's the coolest thing because it's not just a 180 line hers is a rainbow at this point and at the height of that was the hardest trick you could do was Aisha and a jade split and then that turned into like spatchcock and eagle also Felix Kane moves and I was like well I think that one's achievable and I didn't have a split so the day that I got it and then really got a good picture of it. I was like, I have done it. And then it's usually in every performance, every freestyle. I think there was one or two that I didn't do a jade and I got off stage. I was like, oh my God, I didn't do a jade. So I have so many pictures of a jade split more than any other photo ever. So probably her. (laughs) And is it a jade split on both? Side. Uh, it's doesn't understand it I'll pull the leg all day and Randy's like no I my hip flexor goes back I don't understand that so I'll practice both sides but if I'm gonna picture of it it's my left leg <laughs> I love it I love Jade Split so much too <laughs> I'll know classic. that it's a classic move yes but i'm it, definitely one one-sided you're too funny <laughs> i think we're all like that though oh wait get me on my good side not the bad side this is instagram <laughs> birthday not this. Oh, let me do it again let me do it again yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. well what is your least favorite trick if you have one i don't know if i have a least I know that for the longest, like baby Jax was like Sunji. It looks so cool. Popping a Fonji. And I started prepping for a Fonji. And I was like, that sucks. Why would I? Why do I want to do that so badly? It's so hard. <laughs> and then Samantha Starr does like 30 of them in a row with like smiling. And I, I don't understand it. And then I do things in heels and I'm like, well, I have Fonji and heels. I mean, you can, but do I want to? And then I reevaluated my life as a power polar, and I was like, no, I'm lazy. I just want to do a thigh hold into a split. <laughs> so, just moves I can't do, and then moves I've thrown away as a I'll teach it, but I don't perform it. That's yes. so funny. You should mention the Fonji and heels because I don't think I've ever seen it now that I think about it. I, I've definitely seen it, but I've not seen, often. I, I can't seen, even. I've, I've seen it. Seen it. Do it. Was. Uh. I've seen a couple people do it. My favorite who can do it in heels is Adam Lent by far. Uh. <laughs> yes, Adam. Mm hmm. Yes. I, I think it's, um, I appreciate the honesty and goodness. In regards to what you are like, fuck, I'm not trying this. I don't care. And at least, and that you know, okay, I might not be able to do this trick, but I'll still teach it because some teachers will be like, well, I've not all teachers, but I've met some instructors where if I can't do it, you're not going to do it. So we're not going to go over it. So it's nice Mm -hmm. to hear that you'll still work with students, even if you can't do the trick, you'll get them into it. 
uh, the, if you, those who can't do teach and if I'm not bendy enough or strong enough to do something, then that would really limit my abilities to help someone who does have that, like a student who has a way bendier back or way bendier shoulders. I taught bird of paradise the other day and I'm like, okay. And I'm still really scared to take that leg all the way off. But I spotted four or five of my students. I didn't let go, but they're like, I'm doing it. I was like, did it more than I have. And that's the whole point is for a student to surpass the teacher and then that means I did a good job because you're going to do it on stage and give me credit for showing you how to do it <laughs> or at least just say thank you like I'm I'm gonna say thank you yeah <laughs> oh, yeah I, I think it. it's but also that also good. challenges me too because I don't know everything so I get to learn about another student and their body and their skill set and when I find out someone's super strong or super bendy I'm like oh I can live vicariously through you too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. It also shows your students too that like you don't have to do all of the tricks. Like you can just be like, you know, this is not a trick that I like to do, but it's still available. Um, because I think a lot of students come into poll and they're like, can you do all of the tricks? And then they're really surprised when when I tell them, you know, like you can't do like most of these tricks. Um, but yeah, if you know, you see it in your student, you can guide them through the things that they want to get through, even if you can't do them yeah. <laughs> yeah. or don't want to. Especially <laughs> when they come in with some TikTok shit and I'm like, what, what is, what? Is it some adorable 12 year old rushing that I want to grow up to be like? I bet I can bend you into it. I'm not doing it. I'm old, remember my trying to live in my lane i'm listening to my body by not teaching you rainbow marchenko but i'll mold you and do it right that's so true right. and we can live through our students yes that is true yeah. it's true what you said um it really does help you learn about different body types and even just the conditioning on how to get it it's so important so for instructors or future instructors listening, learn. Even if you can't do the trick, teach it and learn. <laughs> yeah. Safely, safely. Yes. yes. Also know your limits as a teacher. If you're really not comfortable or if you don't know the anatomy or the biomechanics or your student, then don't, <laughs> don't, don't be that instructor to be like, oh, I'm just strong. And then they rip their rotator. Like, got to ask yeah. questions you got to know you're the person you're working with yes so true trust <laughs> trust is so important <laughs> do you have any um teaching do we ask this teaching philosophies yeah but to use a lot of analogies and silly voices or silly noises it also really depends on like who I'm teaching, like, are they a visual learner? Are they, I have to do the move and like feel it out. Are they uh, listening that I say it a thousand times and that soaks in, or do I have to do the move a thousand times before it soaks in? Um, so it's learning that audience, but then me just personally, as you can see, I'm, I'm very goofy. <laughs> so analogies, um, silly noises, a lot of cues going like I sound like blues clues when I'm teaching <laughs> and they're like bar, bar, bar. I'm like yeah, bar, bar. and it, it helps it breaks the language barrier to anyone as well because they're not in their head like right left upside down inside outside you don't know what that is upside down so I'm like they're like so analogies and silly noises <laughs> I love it, right? It's a whole other language. <laughs> it is, it is, but it's also somehow really relatable. Mm -hmm. I think yes. that's where all my tutorials are, are silent, though, because if not, I'll just start squirreling and that person watching is like, wow, I would never pay for her workshop, Jesus. <laughs> and they might. I don't know. I should try a, a talking video and then do all the fun noises. <laughs> Yes, reveal those noises. I also teach with noises. They'll be like a. 
awesome. A sage yes. and a big cursor too. Like fuck that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, just being totally real. <laughs> yeah, so speaking of workshops, you mentioned um about jokingly, well, I wouldn't want to take a workshop, but we want to hear about your workshop. I do travel and teach workshops. I was supposed to have a UK tour, and then 2020 was like, no, you're not. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. COVID. I'm, I apologize. I still travel around the U.S. and things are starting to open up a little bit. So I am available for hire. Um, I get to teach at Polcon. I don't know when this is coming up, but I get to teach at Polcon. Two workshops as well. I just got back from Florida. I might do another Florida trip. And I was also in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Got some Georgia dates maybe in the book. So yeah, oh, I'm available for that. Um, as a pole entrepreneur, do you have any advice on how to get those tours like that? Do you have a manager, an agent? Are you networking? <laughs> it's all me with my cup of coffee and my cats on my laptop sliding into DM. Hey, it's I good to, love it. It is definitely good to know. Yeah, I was the promoter. I'm my own biggest cheerleader. If everyone else cheerleads too, like that's great. I welcome it, but I have to be my own biggest cheerleader, or else nothing will get done. Yeah, I, yeah. Because for so long, I was under the assumption, oh, Chris, you got to get good. So they reach out to you and they ask you to come. I never, it's like you mentioned earlier, imposter syndrome of going into their DM, hey, can I teach a workshop there, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely been a couple opportunities that folks have asked me and I'm like me really okay and then I'm always curious when I get there after my workshops like if I'm with the studio owner the host or whoever booked me I'm like so why'd you pick me and really it's because of how did they hear about me was it a workshop that interested them was it social media presence was it hey, go on. I, I would like to get that feedback to either adjust it or keep doing what I was doing. So everything's been good so far, but there have been a few rare opportunities that someone slid into my DMs and I was very honored. Right, I love it. Cause we talked to, you know, many different pole dancers in all different aspects. And um, it's always interesting to hear how they like build a following. Cause sometimes it's like, oh, you know I did all of these competitions and made myself known. Um, yeah, do you how do you like how do you keep such a good following on your social media and 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 like do you have a schedule of when you post things or how does that all work? <laughs> I schedule I do schedule some posts or I post when I can. I made unless I just follow a band on tour for 4 days like I did recently. Love you bad omens. Um I do have a system I like to post on my Instagram and it's mainly just for my brain one tile will be a marketing promotion like I'm teaching a workshop here book me for workshops or a promo code that I'm affiliated with the, the next one is just picture because I like Don Curry's work or something fun or you know a moment a freeze hot frame moment and then a video or tutorial and that also help my helps my brain in the sense that when I go to log on, I'm like, what do I need to post? And I just have content ready, but then a system that I don't get overwhelmed or I'll schedule them in advance. If I remember, unless I follow a band on tour for four days. Oops. I love the 240. Thank you so much for sharing that for the pole entrepreneurs, because it is quite a challenge for sure, bringing I mean, getting in that following and trying to make the money we want. <laughs> yes, and definitely is dedication and finding the algorithm that works best for you and then use the tools that are provided like scheduling posts or viewing those insights, like who's looking from where at one times and then use that to your advantage. So use your insights. That's such a good, that's really, really good advice, right? Because the insights are there, but 
do we look at them? <laughs> they can really help us figure out when everyone, to post. Yeah, yes. Everyone looks at that follower count and they're like, I got 20 new followers today or 200 new followers. I'm like, but where did they come from? Because I got a surge of like a hundred or 200 people after I posted the lap dance video and it was all men in Persia or India or something I'm like that's not the followers I want though how did y'all get on my page what hashtag or algorithm words algorithm popped up that you all followed me so it's also avoiding those situations and posting at different times and catching the hashtags you're using yeah and then you you also mentioned that you have like a pool of of content maybe that you that you pull from do you schedule like a certain time of the month that you just make all your content or do you just feel that like today I feel like making content and then <laughs> It's usually more when I just have the free time because it does take a few hours. Like if I'm not teaching a bunch of classes in a day or preparing to travel or I just have a couple hours, I'll make some flyers. I'll schedule a couple of posts for the next couple of days. So it's more on an opportunistic basis because my schedule is all over the place. So that works for me. And that still helps my OCD, like type A planner brain. But I'm like, this is my moment. I'm going to get a bunch of stuff done right now. And then it might be another week before I get to do that again. But I already know what I want to post or make or create or, you know, this event just happened. I'm going to post about it. This event's coming up. So I'm going to post about it. So it's definitely a fast pace and that works for me. But some other people might want every Monday for two hours, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, and that works for them. God, thank you for sharing that. That's such good information. And it's good to also know that everyone is different. <laughs> yes. I'm always so curious because I'm such bad at time management. <laughs> it's definitely I mean, blocking out a little bit of time for yourself. And if you don't find that you're having that time to actually cut some time out and create it. Like I know tomorrow I'm not teaching any classes. I'm not preparing for anything. So I will dedicate, I'll set a timer or dedicate something that I don't have too much screen time that my brain fries, but then I'm going to get X amount of posters done and schedule a couple of things and go through all my comments and then take that screen time away. And then I can plan out the next day. I have something like that. Whereas sometimes I don't like when I follow a band on tour for four days and I forget <laughs> to do all of that. I love it. Shots, <laughs> <I don't. laughs> totally, totally fine to run off into the abyss every so often. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just need a break too. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. the reminder of taking break from screen time because um, I'm the opposite type. I like to schedule this hour, these hours. I know this is what I'm doing, but I forget that screen time to not kill my brain or destroy my brain. Mm -hmm. so thank you for that reminder. <laughs> Timer, be like, you know, 30 minutes or two hours. But once you feel like you look up and then it's dark, and you don't know where the time went that's that's probably too much <laughs> too much screen time <laughs> take a break drink some water right yeah your stomach's growling you're like what just happened <laughs> cat mm. is hungry oh that's mine <laughs> sorry <laughs> i love it too funny yes yeah so what do you do in your free time if you have any <laughs> i have free time i Try to do things that make me happy, whether that's spending time with friends, family, my partner, my cats. If it's just me being alone, I'm an introvert, surprisingly enough. I'm a cancer. So me sitting and just binging 10 hours of Netflix, even though we just talked about screen time, sometimes you have to. If it's for self-care, I'll also do the whole Epsom salt bubble bath thing, but the things I look forward to most is eating with my friends and going out for lunches and dinners and going to concerts where I can release all of my rage and energy. That's also probably why my voice is kind of scratchy because I was screaming all last weekend and haven't fully recovered from all the, the and, 
and death metal growls. <laughs> You said shout out to the bad omen, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Do you want to share some of your other musical influences? Anything that moves me. So I was currently obsessed with bad omens, motionless and white. In this moment, I've been following all of them on tour, essentially. But it also really depends on my mood. I'll play anything from Michelle Branch and Paramore and Cute is What We Aim For to Tool and Death Tones to Minotaur and you know, it's just all over the place. I love it. I love that you mentioned In This Moment because I've been on In This Moment for like the last year. I cannot get enough of them and I want to really create a piece. To so just cut me up. That I you moved. There's a photo of Oh my God, Black Widow. I love that. <laughs> and I have also have posters in front of me on my wall and a huge concert wall with posters and shadow boxes of stuff that I've collected at the shows and VIP passes and stuff. So I'm a big concert person. I did concert photography and interviewed bands. So now that this is flipped and I'm being interviewed, this is very strange because usually I ask the question. OMG, next step, pole dance at a concert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's moves, and I'm sure Bud Omens would want a stage on theirs, like a whole stage on their set. I'll do it for Snoop Dogg too, though. So, Snoop, I got you. <laughs> yeah. So then smoke a blunt with him right after. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm so excited to think about the the prospect of having pole dancing be part of more large like musical performances and stuff like that. Um, it's so mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, isn't it like Summer Walker and stuff had they like her and you know Snoop Dogg has his performers. Usher has performances now, and like Pink's out there doing aerials. Yes. She's, she's gonna get a pole. She's gonna get a pole next. Oh, I, that would be awesome. Right, wasn't Good. Beyonce on a poll recently too? Wasn't yes. it Jay? Yeah. Beyonce yes. too? Yeah. I didn't see, I didn't see Beyonce. Interesting. Yeah. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I thought it was like just a little swirl for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She definitely like got on the poll for like a little poll set. <laughs> yeah. Like, I love it. Yes, I love it so much. <laughs> Um, do you want to talk a bit about uh, the Pole Academy and maybe some of the classes that you teach there? So I opened the Pole Academy as a brick and mortar in 2014. So we are about to have our nine-year anniversary party next month, which we are super excited about. But before that, the Pole Academy turned into an in-home project, which again, I will show you. That's my very first poll. His name is Monsieur Pole. He's French, he's gay, and he's a wonderful dance partner. But I started teaching out of my apartment back when I was still dancing in the clubs. And that's how the, the whole thing kind of snowballed. So when I wanted to get out of the club and open a studio, I obtained a business partner, like a very smart person <laughs> and an investor. And we opened and it was just me and my best friend at the time. And we were the only instructors for a while and I almost died and burnt out a little bit but it's luckily continued to grow and we are open seven days a week we have morning evening and weekend classes classes private lessons private parties competition training and a little bit of everything in between even adding in workshops with guest instructors other styles of dance and movement and it's just grown into a community and I'm so happy and thankful for it. So yep. awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I got a big old team and a whole bunch of students and one big happy dysfunctional misfit family. <laughs> I love it. Jeez. Hell yeah. Yeah. Do you have any advice to give anybody um, wanting to open up a pole studio? Part of me wants to say, just do it. Just do it. What can go wrong? Lots, lots of things can go wrong. <laughs> um, the beginning part was very stressful of obtaining the business license and your permits and having 
the inspectors come out and they're looking at the ceilings and looking at poles and they're like, what are you doing? I was like, it's a gym! And making sure everything's up to code and that your instructors are certified and having all the paperwork and your insurance. Get insurance. Have enough money in the bank to support yourself or your instructors that you plan on paying if they're a 1099 or a W-2. There's paperwork and a lot of admin. And also, you're not going to just teach. The entire admin and back end is just as important, actually more so doing your marketing and all the businessy stuff in the backside. It's, it's a lot. It's a, it's like a job. It's really weird. It's fun. And you're your own boss. So yes. do it. Still do it. I'm going to go back. Just do it. Better to work so that. With ourselves than for somebody else. Hmm. I love how you were like, it's like a job. <laughs> it is. It's going to be glamorous that they're going to open and, you know, mm -hmm. just teach some classes. And I'm like, there's retention of students and payroll and codes and education. And there's right. a lot it's, that goes into it, it that nobody tells you about. <laughs> right. It's like a dream job. However, you do have to work at work. <laughs> Yeah, it is it is a dream job and then it's still a job <laughs> right right I always say too like um because I own the studio as well and I'm like I do a lot more janitorial things than I thought I would be doing <laughs> clean fold the rags scrub the poles mop the floor we roll all over it and we're all sweaty doing fish flop so right, right I'm just cleaning up after the children <laughs> Yeah, kids, kids are messy, man. Kids are so messy. <laughs> I love my students, but I will walk in and be like, I will not allow any food candy in the playground anymore because you guys can't clean up. And they're like, it's me. I spilled my nerds. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then they spill a coffee and you're like, in here, why is this next to your bowl? But it, I wouldn't have it any other way either. So it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> the only really big downside that I don't think people understand is it can be your passion and then your passion turns into a job. So that escape that we had when we were hobbyists starts to shift. And for example, I'm rarely a student. That's why I like Polcon so much and having workshops come to me because I get to be a student instead of just teach, teach, teach and admin and work and business, mm, business ears, things like that. <laughs> but Again, still wouldn't change it. Just got to find something else that has a little bit of passion so I can go back to enjoying pole for what it is. So cross-training is also super helpful and important. And your studio lasted through COVID. Do you want to tell us a little bit how that was? That was scary as shit. That was so sorry to be so blunt. It was terrifying. Oddly enough, I had just spoken to a couple people about transitioning to do online, like one-on-one -on -one lessons through Zoom or Skype or something. And 2020, you know, I was going to go to the UK and I was going to become an online person and do online stuff. And then COVID happened and everyone did it. Nobody wants to do a, an online lesson with me now that... Bendy Kate and Dan Rosen and stuff is available to the, the mass international general public. Um, so that kind of like hurt my little feelings. And I was like, it's okay. It's okay. But in the long run, it was really cool because we already knew how to do a couple of things online. It was just a bigger push. So again, my lead instructor and I were like, we're going to run the classes and we'll change all of our formats and we're going to do online classes and my memberships and keep everything active, which did really good. And then we would have people join that weren't from our studio that always wanted to take classes with us, which was very flattering and very humbling. And then everything started to open back up. 
and then they didn't do so well because all of our students at least wanted to be in the studio and be with us and be around people and see that community again and even if we were wearing masks while we're twerking upside down so but it was really scary i was lucky enough to hire more instructors for our big return and we did luckily get a, some of the the grants and sponsorships through our state and the federal stuff but that was really scary if we weren't as established as we were like if we were a newer studio i don't think we would have made it through right that was a lie it was just the unknowing and then but it sounds like you had such creative solutions um, to get you through, which is really what we all just need to do forever. <laughs> With whatever we did, we happens. That we never thought we would have. And we're like, let's do a bunch without the pole. And, you know, a lot of people didn't have a pole in their house and spotting, we can't spot through a screen. So that was like really interesting to teach an intermediate or higher level class. And I'm like, I'm watching on my screen, freaking out. Like, <laughs> so it was. It's very different. Also, learning how to teach, because again, I make very funny analogies and, and cues like that, but learning how to watch people through a screen and then talk to them while they're off spinning and you can't touch them or stop them or spot them. That was also a learning curve in good way because you had to learn how to communicate differently. Right, I, I feel that way too. There was so much more words that you have to say <laughs> and you have yeah. to be correct in the right and the left limbs <laughs> yeah inside outside or you go to demo and they're like can you do it again because you were buffering yeah. and I was like oh sure <laughs> you cut out really quick you're frozen do it again <laughs> that is too do you still teach online classes at your studio or no? Not through the studio. I'm available for online lessons, so private one-on-one, -on -one, but the studio does not offer them anymore because we have so much going on in studio and everyone translated better with the in-studio classes. So we discontinued our online classes, but I am still available for private one-on-ones. Yes. Uh, and we'll have that link in the comments for all of you listeners and watchers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think this um, episode will be out before PolCon if you wanted to give everyone a little hint of what is to come at PolCon from you. Yes. Oh, please. I am also available for in-person privates at PolCon. And I'm teaching two workshops, my signature Twisted Tricks and Drops and also Back to Basics. So a beginner all level friendly one and then one that will require inversions. I am also curating the creepy showcase for the first time. So I got to pick all the super fun performers. So I will also be in that and Ho Apparel is sponsoring that and they sponsor me. So it's, it's just like full circle it makes me very happy. That's and if so not, awesome. I'll be wandering around, not with cat ears, um, but I'll be wandering around. So come say hi, because I'm probably just sitting there awkwardly watching a showcase. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I'm so sad we couldn't attend. We were planning on it, and then a whole bunch of things happened. Um, but hopefully in the future, we'll be able to attend a poll con. More. More. I'm sure, we'll put on another one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Love it. How um, you mentioned that you had a sponsor. How did that happen? Sliding into the apps. <laughs> Too. I mean, thank you for the honesty, though. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a promo code with Hoodlum Fang, and I had reached out to them once before, and they were like, "This moment," and then things kind of started to shift, or enough time had passed, and I was like. Hey, and again, so I was just really annoying. And Chloe was like, an American person, sure, you got the right style. So we just had a really nice networking relationship through that. And then Ho Apparel had done a call for ambassadors to use like to sponsor. And I was like, Tara's tribute. And they're like, you, okay, you're in. So 
to ask, can, can, what the horse will they'll uh, say is no or not yet. So just ask. I love it. Thank you for that. Yes, you just solidify it more and more. We definitely need to do an episode about imposter syndrome because we all I, have it. <laughs> everyone has it. Everyone has it. Yes. It's it's just taking that big breath and going. <laughs> right? Yeah. Do you have any advice? Because it's it's like you said, it's like taking that that breath, but understanding like we all each have our wonderful thing to offer. Like, how do you, how do you have the courage to do that? <laughs> uh, coffee? I just coffee. I get all wired up on coffee. I'm like, oh, I'm going to fuck around and find out. But most of the time is knowing that usually it's not personal. If I send out a thousand workshop emails going, hey, I'm going to be around here. Or, hey, would you like to host me? And people say, no, I al I also have to say no. So I'm in that weird Venn diagram of I'm also a studio owner and I'm also a performer and I'm also a traveling workshop host that sometimes you just have to say no. And it's not because they don't like you or your style or you're not cool enough or you don't have a thousand million bajillion followers or something, or you didn't win enough competitions. Sometimes it's just bad timing. And, and that's okay. So you can either try again later or build a connection with that person so you can check back. But you just got to ask. You never know until you ask. Right. I love that you say that too, because like um, Chris had said earlier, like sometimes we just wait for these opportunities to fall in our lap, but that rarely happens. And we just need to have enough confidence to ask for the things that we deserve. <laughs> it's also easier that most of this is through emails or instagrams because it was face to face and i was like can i do this and they're like no i would be like oh. i would just cry all the time because i'm so so sensitive <laughs> it's through email and it's if we're not available at this time to host you maybe another time i'm like okay bye check that off in my spreadsheet because I'm OCD and I will just rendezvous back later. So oh. the spreadsheet. Yes. I told you they work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I Google. love it. Yes. As Google yes. works. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have anything else that you want uh, would like to promote? Um, we know you have your Poe Academy studio and you offer one-on-one -on -one privates and your hoodlum fang, um, I, I guess associate, but anything else you want to put out there? Yeah, if you guys are following me, it's on Instagram and TikTok at Jack's Poll. That's J-A-P-O-L-E, -E, very original. Somehow I got the handle. <laughs> But I do have a couple affiliate promo codes with RAR Designs, Ho Apparel, and Hoodlum Fang. And I will be at Polcon. I am available for in-person and online workshops and privates. And I hope to spin with everyone soon. Yes. What's next for you? What do you see in your poll future? Poll future is I'm going to get through Polcon. We're going to go through that. I do have a couple opportunities that I'm going to feel out for other workshops going up and down the East Coast. If not, maybe I can get that UK tour back on track. That would be super fun. And as far as the studio continue to grow, I have a lovely, big, beautiful team. But you happen to have campuses of academies, you know? So maybe we'll, they'll just be more locations in that sense. And then I'm just going to take care of my body so I can still drop into a split and keep performing. <laughs> Which With is our the old knees. <laughs> is the goal for all of us at 60 or 70. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Kips scare me, but I'm like, I want to do them. And my knees are like, do you? And I'm like, oh, I got <laughs> I'm trying until. <laughs> Too funny. We got this. <laughs> I think we didn't ask, what pole grip do you use, if any at all? 
use a lot when I'm teaching my like intros and beginner classes. But if I'm about to perform or it's a hard trick or something, I still have a bottle of that body shop sorbet. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I've been hoarding a bottle and I do have a bottle of dry hands left that I use the idiot's bit of amount and then a little bit stickier. I like grip it. I found it on Amazon and it worked really well. I normally have pretty dry skin, so I need a little bit of a moisturizer or stick and then my hands a little bit of top. So it doesn't take a lot. I like to get my body heat, like my body temperature up and then I usually stick pretty well though. Ooh, it's always thanks. interesting to hear from people from all over. Like, I don't know if it's more humid down there or if it's dry um, in South Carolina. Everyone's skin is so different. <laughs> yeah. But I like that we asked. Yeah. It, it might help someone else who's listening. Hey, maybe I should try that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely different products for different skin types. I know my body and it is humid here in South Carolina, but I also grew up in Las Vegas. So it was very dry <laughs> and I have dry skin and I'm Irish. So pale and I don't know. I just know what works for me. And it might be a concoction or you might have to do trial and error. So if you have dry skin, you need a little bit of moisture. Right. I love that you mentioned you have a concoction because some people think it's just like, oh, this one thing is going to save me. But sometimes it's a lot. Like you'll put one thing on your elbow pits. One thing you need a head. magic potion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever elixir you make, that will be it. And it might be different for, like you said, your hands or elbows or knees or thighs or something like that. But usually I'm pretty dry for the body and then the space a little bit on my hands. But yeah, it might, it might take different groups for different areas for sure. Well, I've got to head out because I have my class. My students are arriving. <laughs> but I think, I mean, Chris, do you have any other questions you can continue on? or I am looking at all the questions now. Any plans in the future? We asked any hobbies. Um, goodness. I think that's, is there anything else you want to share with the audience? Um, any advice? Um, anything upcoming you're excited about for promotion? Anything at all? I was thankful enough to talk about the promotion and stuff of all the things that I have coming up. Um, I don't have like a catchy, like catchphrase or like sign off or anything. I didn't play <laughs> by any means, but I guess all I can say is just be authentically you. And it might be a little cliche, but there's only one of you and you just have to be true to that. I had even coming on here, I was like, Oh, I have to be this or I have to say this. And I'm like, no, I have cat ears on. Why do I have to be, do, or say anything? They wanted to talk to me for me. And so I'm going to give them that. So anyone listening, do the same thing. Yes. I absolutely love that. I hope you enjoyed your time because I enjoyed my time with your authentic self. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah. And thank you for that beautiful reminder that's in, in, I know you said it seems like cliche, but we all need to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Especially <laughs> being so hard on yourself and the imposter syndrome, give yourself a little room to breathe. It's, it's not worth it. Yes. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jax. This was so much fun. <laughs> thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. Hell yeah. I cannot wait to see what the poll future, I mean, what the life has in store for you in the future. I'm excited. On in this moment, stage dancing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Maria, yeah. hear this. Maria Blinks, we need you to hear this. <laughs> mm. I want to perform to Sex Mar Metal Barbie, but that's. <laughs> Yes. I don't have the Barbie shoes. I have something different. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Well, speaking of shoes, I guess we should sign off. Oh, so yes. For... I think somebody has a pair of Barbie shoes. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for listening to or watching to this episode of Full on the Call. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Wilbers. And we are here with Jack Spencer of yeah. the Pole Academy. And we are sad enough. I have to back up so far because yeah. these shoes are oh. 10 inches. I absolutely love those. We're it's signing amazing. off. Amazing. <laughs> I had to stand so I didn't fall. My face and my I head. Love it his feet. <laughs> yes. Yes, those my... are really ten inches. Uh, Ooh, I'm... Uh... <laughs> so you I can love... do one watching. That's free because OnlyFans would charge for that. <laughs> <laughs>